Hey friends, welcome back to OG Universe. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending some time with me as we take a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Batman Forever Wave. So we're going to be looking at all four figures over the course of this week, and I'm very excited. We just reviewed the Crystal Dawn Robin. Check out my review for that and my thoughts and opinions. It's on my DC Multiverse playlist. But today we are taking a look at Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face. Yes, that iconic character that, uh, man, it's stuck in my brain. Every time I think of Two-Face, I'm thinking of this look for Two-Face that Tommy Lee Jones had in Batman Forever. Now, I also remember having, as of like 29 years ago, the five points of articulation of five-inch Two-Face figure. And that was one of my favorite figures. And for a lot of reasons, it was a great representation of Two-Face. I love Two-Face. He's a cool villain. But man, this one takes it to the next level for sure. So let's take a look at the packaging, what you get and what we don't get with this two-faced figure. So we'll start looking at the packaging. We've got this oversized window box to accommodate that massive wing that's included in the Nightmare Man Bat Builder figure. You also got Tommy Lee Jones looking all handsome there. And we got a display stand at the bottom on the side. Two-Face Batman Forever, and you got that really nice logo there. Would have been nice to see this green, like we saw it in the Batman and Robin. It had that nice red, really set it apart. Would have been cool if this was a bright green to go along with some of the black. That would have been interesting. But we get the picture of the Nightmare Bat, Man Bat, <laughs> and then you get the pieces that go with what, how to put it together, and the cross at the bottom. All four of these iconic. Pieces of photography that uh, Man Ran wrapping in 1995. I remember seeing this literally everywhere you went. There was Batman and Robin, Riddler and Two Face. So very cool. Now, in addition to the figure, you also get a couple hands. Yeah, you get a trigger finger hand and a closed fist. So on the figure, you do get a very nice looking coin flipping fist. And you can see the coin flipping in midair. That's a really nice effect and a nice touch. Instead of just having the coin in his palm, you actually got it flipping. Something very different. And then we got a trigger finger that holds a gun from these like Fairland munitions pack. Fortunately, it's not included. You got to buy it yourself. I did do a little bit of paint work on that because he had some really cool guns in this movie. Tommy Lee Jones had some really nice handguns. Machine guns are really cool with the Tommy guns, but yeah, you get nothing like that because of the WB mandate on no guns. Berlin is doing his best to try and accommodate getting some guns involved in some of his figures like Jonah Hex. So hopefully in the future we're going to see some more characters if they go with that exclusive kind of McFarland store or kind of like a collector's edition. Hopefully we'll get a dead shot with some guns. Can you imagine a dead shot without a guns? But heck, we had a Sergeant Rock without any guns, so you never know. But what we're not talking about Sergeant Rock. He's going he's to come up later in a review down the road. But we're looking at Harvey Dent, Two-Face, played by Tommy Lee Jones. And my goodness, the sculpted detail work is absolutely phenomenal. It looks absolutely amazing. All the texturing in that face, the face sculpt is just pure Tommy Lee Jones in all of his kind of evilness. And the hair looks phenomenal. And then we come to this side. We've got the slick back hair. We kind of got that evil-looking Tommy Lee Jones as well as Harvey Dent, the district attorney for Gotham City. And the transition is so nice. So well done. Absolutely stellar work. This is a small little piece of artwork, man. Absolutely fantastic. Then all the detail in the costume. We get these beautiful printed on kind of leopard prints going on here. That's just wild. The zebra bread, man, it looks phenomenal and it's very crisp. No slop, no uh, errors, so to speak. Doesn't bleed through onto the other side of his coat as well. And it goes all the way through front and back, which is a great touch. Very, very impressive. And you can see the coin there. I think I really do like the way they try to do this. You know, he's like flipping it in the air. And it's kind of like, let the coin decide your fate. <laughs> <laughs> so to speak, sorry guys, I had to do that. But yeah, man, it is a really stellar figure. I'm very happy that it turned out so well. Just on a sculpted detail, 
It is absolutely phenomenal. We talked about Cyborg Superman being one of the best sculpted figures. I think this definitely has one of the best head sculpts, hands down. Man, it's impressive. It definitely has Tommy Lee Jones shrunk down into action figure form. It is in my hands right now. Wow, pretty damn awesome. Definitely does need the gun. I think without a gun, it's just odd, man. He doesn't come with anything else. And he, throughout the movie, he's got a gun in his hand almost every scene. Or a detonator, you know, or some wine. <laughs> he drinks a lot of wine. But it's cool to see him in this form. And just simply add any kind of weapon. I like this gun. This little uh, Desert Eagle, I guess, looks pretty damn cool. But yeah, just an awesome looking figure. Now let's check out some of the articulation that this figure has. So the head is on a really nice ball joint. It has a lot of range of motion up, down. So it's got to probably be one of the extended neck pegs. Look at the side attitude you can get. You can just break his neck. Absolutely awesome. And he doesn't have any spacer joints by the looks of things. But he still has a pretty good range of motion. He has a cut at the bicep, double jointed, ratcheted elbows, ball joints at the hands. So you have all sorts of articulation. And now we're coming into a, probably a tough spot here. Because of the coat and that rubber inlay, you can feel he does have some sort of diaphragm cut on the actual figure inside. But it's rigid and doesn't have much movement whatsoever. It's kind of a brick, just like the Longbow Hunter version of Green Arrow. Very much a brick in the torso. Not much going on for articulation, unfortunately. You do have ball joints at the waist here, at the hips. Double jointed ratcheted knees. You have all the ball jointed toe articulation, ratchet movement, side pivot, everything going on there. So very nicely done. He's got his nice little loafers on. And man, yeah, like I said, just the printed details on this guy is phenomenal. Of course, he could be just maybe a little bit wider in the shoulders, just because I like to see him a little bit more bulkier in that sense. And I think Tom Lee Jones really wasn't super, super skinny by any means. He was pretty, you know, in really good shape for an older guy, so to speak, in that time, 29 years ago. But yeah, just a little bit wider in the shoulders, I think, would have been appropriate. But overall, man, he is a phenomenal looking Two-Face. And I think he really treads the line between movie accuracy and blending it into your comic book universe shelf. I think that could go either way because unfortunately we haven't had a standard real comic book version of Two-Face. Now we did get the Batman Reborn version of Two-Face which is stellar. It's that split red and a really dark navy and he's in the pack costume and it's twisted and it's a hallucination that Dick Grayson has when he's Robin or excuse me Batman. And, man, we've got that figure which came out of nowhere, and I'm so happy he's part of my collection, but I want a classic version. Now, we have got some more versions in the Batman animated universe, so to speak. We have got a couple different versions of Two-Face. Two of almost the same one by the looks of things, but that's a really great-looking Two-Face. That's one of my favorites. What's it really made him one of my favorites is that animated series, Batman the Animated Series. He was such a great character. They nailed the aesthetics, they nailed the personality, and it was just fantastic. Yeah, so overall, I'm very, very pleased with the way this character looks. Sculpted detail is unbelievable, and I do want to compare him to the Dark Knight version of Harvey Dent that was played by Aaron Eckhart. Haven't opened this one up, haven't opened any of these Dark Knight figures, but this is a very interesting take on Two Face as well. He's got the coin in his hand, no weapons. No accessories whatsoever. We just got Bane's body, and that's it. But it's a pretty damn good looking Aaron Earhart Two Face. You know, he's got the burnt crispy costume, his jacket. Face sculpt is nasty. I mean, you know, this is kind of like fantasy comic book version of getting acid spilled on your face, and this is the real life version of getting your face burnt off. You know, it is creepy. It's definitely really, really well done. So let's bring in some characters for some comparisons and see how he looks against some other characters from the that movie universe. So the first guy I want to bring in is our Batman and Robin. Robin. And I kind of like him as a Nightwing. I'm going to consider him a Nightwing almost because the costume is so similar, familiar to Nightwing. But seeing these two guys in comparison looks really nice. They definitely have a good size comparison. You know, you see the 
Chris O'Donnell version of Robin has kind of grown up a bit more in this version of Nightwing. He's a little bit taller, and he looks really, really good, especially with his Two-Face. And then let's bring in another character that I think will be interesting to see how he straddles the line between movie version and comic book version. I think for a comic book version of Two-Face, this could work. Because we've got our very comic book version of Nightwing here. And he looks great. I think these two guys will look great together on your shelf. Two-Face calls in all sorts of mayhem in Gotham. And maybe it's up to the Titans to kind of stop him. Really great to see these two guys together. And then I also want to bring in our other Robin from this wave. And I like the high size comparison. You can see Robin is definitely a bit younger here. Two-Face, you know, he stands a bit taller, which is great. And I like the way these two guys contrast. And they had some pivotal scenes in Batman Forever as well. So very interesting to see these two guys together. They translate well. Definitely very good. Now bring in uh, some Batman. So I'm going to see some Batmans against this guy. So this is our customized Batman from the Dawn of Justice. Batman versus Superman. We painted the tights black. We put the Flash movie Batman head on this body buck. And I like the way these two look. This is like almost a continuation. If Michael Keaton still donned the cape and cowl and made it into the third movie, this could have been a costume and it could have been an interpretation of what he might have looked like. And I like the way these guys pair up. Definitely very cool. And I also want to bring in one of my favorites. This version of Joker from Infinite Frontier. I like to see how these two guys look. This is the most stylized Joker we have in our collection. And it's very comic book accurate to the artist. And these two guys look really cool. They can cause some major, major mayhem in Gotham City. Very cool to see these guys on the shelf together. Very nice. Then I definitely want to bring in this Batman. How would he look with one of the most comic book comic book straight accurate version and man i think these two guys look pretty good together all right definitely some very interesting body proportions the hush batman is big it's thick it's one of the bulkiest batmans very cool looking and to see him take on two-face i think these two guys work for your comic book stylization i think two-face can translate into the movie verse and into your comic book universe shelves really easily i think it looks great and then a couple of Batmans we'll bring in. So this is our another customized Batman. It's kind of like the extension of a Kenner figure, kind of modernized in McFarlane style. This is the Batman from the Flash movie. We swapped out the head for the Arkham 2.0 head. Looks great on this body buck. We did some paint work on the belt to break up the uniformity of the black outfit. And these two guys look awesome together too. Uh, it's like 1995 all over again with these guys. You know, you got some kind of like an updated tribute to both of those Kenner action figures that came out for the movies. And man, they look so good together. Really nice. And then finally, we'll bring out one last figure, and that is our George Clooney Batman, which has an OG weapon from the actual 1995 figure. This is the only way I could get it on. So it does just kind of clip into a hand but unfortunately this figure doesn't have an open hand it's a fist so i just kind of had to squeeze it together so it's a two-piece set that comes apart but we got these two guys together george clooney is a little bit short for batman in my opinion but to see these guys together it's still pretty damn awesome we've had various different batmans that work well with this two-face and i think this two-face is a home run absolutely stellar action figure even I am a little biased because, you know, I love Two-Face. He's one of my favorite bad villains of all time. But this is truly an outstanding action figure. And if you wanted a comic book version of Two-Face, this is probably as close as we're going to get now. Who knows what 2025 is going to hold. But, man, this is an awesome figure. Definitely add a weapon from the munitions pack. Add some sort of handgun, a Tommy gun, rocket launcher, whatever you want. I think he's desperately needing some sort of armament to take on Batman. So there you go, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Whenever I do a new video, it'll jump automatically into your feed. So definitely hit that bell notification. 
And there you go, guys. Hope you've enjoyed this review. Stay tuned. We're reviewing the other two figures. We got Jim Carrey as the Riddler. We got Val Kilmer as Batman. And then, of course, we got our Nightmare Man Bat figure to put together as well. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Take it easy, and we'll see you soon.